So, today I'm here with the legendary Mr. Rick Beato. Thank you so much for coming on and yeah. having a chat with us today. Um, Rick, well, you will all know very, very well as a renowned producer, as an artist, as a musician, and now as an internet celebrity. <laughs> well, for sure. I know that it seems a peculiarity, doesn't it, to us? It does. Sat in front of a camera, but yeah. that's, that's effectively what it is. And when you think about the mass appeal and the mass market that we hit, we hit, actually, some of your videos hit more than mainstream TV programs. Yeah. So, I wanted to ask a, a question of you, okay. because I think on your channel, you do such a wide variety of topics, you do a wide variety of training, you've also got your Beato book, you've got the Beato club, and all the good things that go with that, that people can access. And it struck me that you must have done quite a few interviews, and also you've put a lot of your knowledge out there already for people. And I just wanted to turn the table a little bit and say, in an interview, have you ever felt that there's a question that you would like to be asked, but have never been asked? Um, um, I, don't, I don't know, maybe, I don't, I don't know. I haven't done that many interviews, actually. Wow. Yeah, I've done very few interviews. Okay, well we could go, we could do the interview type thing and that's, that's awesome, okay. Well, first thing, I've been talking to you a lot, I've been fortunate enough to be here with Rick at GitCon all week here in Germany, in, you can pronounce it much better than me, Mark Markation. Mark Markation. And we've been treated by Framus and Warwick to a fantastic week here. It's been a great facility and awesome stuff around. But I've been very fortunate in that we've spent a lot of time together. We've spent an awful lot of time together. He's very kind and driven me around because he's got a fantastic hire car. And we've had a lot of chats. And I've picked up an awful lot of knowledge uh, as I've been listening to the things that this man says. You're a bit of an oracle. You're a bit of an oracle. <laughs> I know you don't like, you're very, he's very unassuming and very self-effacing. Uh, but um, truth be known, he makes an awful lot of sense on an awful lot of subjects. So. I won't do the normal interview thing of asking you what first got you into music because I know all that and I do think that a lot of people out there will know that. Uh, and I also think that the, the motivation for your YouTube videos and for being a YouTube on YouTube is fairly self-evident, that you want to get that knowledge out there. So what I will ask you is for some advice. First of all, for musicians starting out, what you consider to be perhaps the key elements of things that if they want to get into the profession, which some of my subscribers certainly will, mm -hmm. uh, what they should go about doing and what, what steps you would recommend they take. And then we'll come to the same thing with YouTube, because actually that's an interesting area as well. So we'll start with musicianship. What do you consider the most key features of, of being a good musician and developing a craft? Um, I think having good rhythm and a good ear. Because with that, you can pretty much do anything. You don't, you don't need to know th music theory. You don't need to know anything like that to be able to play really well. But you have to have good time and you have to have a good ear because that can lead you to figure out anything. I actually said to you at the meal the other evening that, that um, I don't believe that people are, uh, what's the word, they're not non-singers what they are is they're non-listeners and I think that the key thing with anything musical is the ability to actually take in and process and it is a you for example you've got almost perfect pitch you, you say not naturally perfect pitch but your son's got absolute perfect pitch which you've seen in the videos it's incredible um, beautiful kids by the way thank you so um, and that can be trained that's something that if you work at and you practice like practicing your instrument and you do exercises for example pick out a tune learn a song by ear that's all good training that people can do to develop their skills yeah. um, uh, is there anything else do you have to have how important do you, have you found 
music theory in your career? I always say that music theory is important to be able to talk about music when you don't have an instrument. We don't have instruments now, but we can talk about music and we need to talk about, we need to use music theory. Unless we're just talking about general things like, I like this song or I don't like that. Here's the reasons. But usually the reasons involve some type of theory. Wrong. Even if the theory is it has a great chorus, it has a great bridge, well, even knowing those two terms is part of music theory if you're thinking about a song. Yeah, absolutely. So it's, an, it's, it's a, a way to label things. Communication, isn't it? It's yes. a form of communication as simple as speech. Yeah. It's a way of conversing in music. Um, so, again, going to that question, it's, it isn't impossible to be a good musician if you've got a good ear and good rhythm. But in order to communicate it and to record it for future generations, it used to be absolutely vital to read. Now with the modern technology that we have, you don't even need to do that because you can just perform it. And there it is, it's a legacy. Yeah, or you can just watch some on YouTube perform it. There you go, and learn it from that. And there's so many people doing instructional things on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I, I particularly like the instructional stuff that you do because it's, it's complex. It's, it's not simple music theory, but you explain it in a way that makes it accessible to people that maybe aren't particularly well versed in, in music theory, which I think is really useful. So if you haven't, I'm sure that most of you have heard of Mr. Rick Beato, but if you haven't, go over and check out his channel. There will be a link in the description down below, because this man can teach you an awful lot and does it in such a way that makes it easy and accessible for you guys. So. Uh, what little traffic I can, I would like to encourage to go over because it's well worth checking out. I've been subscribed for probably about eight months now and I thoroughly enjoyed it and I'll wait avidly for your posts. Which brings me on to that other question then. YouTube. How, why and what? I tell you what, I'm going to turn this on. Rick does a thing on his channel which is immensely popular called What Makes This Song Great. So I'm going to say to Rick Beato, what makes Rick Beato's YouTube channel great? <laughs> How do you succeed on YouTube? How do you succeed on YouTube? Um, I think having things that people want to watch. I think it's very YouTube's very transactional, I will say that. People will, on my channel, they either tune in for entertainment value, when that's not my channel, or they tune in for educational value, uh, where you teach them something and they get, they, they get a benefit from that. I mean, some people, think that I have a good personality, but it's a very tiny amount and doesn't include any of my, my wife or my children. But. <laughs> I don't believe that for a <laughs> no, moment. This, this gentleman is on the phone speaking to his family and his children on a daily basis. Uh, it's been difficult to be away from our families for, yeah. for the whole week and we've got children around the same age, so yeah. we've both been trying to keep in touch with home. And, yeah, definitely family man. And you're being self-effacing again, which is a very British thing. So I am going to say congratulations, you're an honorary Brit. <laughs> but um, yeah, certainly I think that your, your work ethic and your upload schedule and also the professionalism with which you approach marketing the channel and developing it. I know that a lot of people out there that watch my channel are other YouTubers, which is, which is great. And they're all at varying different stages. I've got people from 2 million subscribers uh, down to no subscribers, but there's, there's quite a few in the upper bracket. So I know that there are a few out there that are YouTubers. And I often try to uh, give some, some insight into how I go about things. And I, I think that for me, it's being honest is the first priority. If you're honest with people and you, you always tell them the truth, even if it, if it doesn't suit you to tell them the truth, but you do, that's one thing. Uh, but also having a regularity, you were discussing yesterday with me about upload schedules and there's too much and there's too little and things like that. But it's also focusing on the content that works. And as I think you've alluded to that, it's about adding value for the viewer, something that makes them want to come back uh, yeah. and see it maybe even time and time again, they're videos that can be organically growing for people. Um, is there anything else as a tip or a pointer that you could give me, for example, uh, for my channel? Because I'm, I'm a, a minute portion of the subscribers that you have, but... I think that, uh, that, that you know, that 
adding value, I think that's, that's a great way of putting it, is, is the most important thing. People, um, you know, think that there's something that they can gain, some type of insight they can gain, or entertainment. There's, there's, there are YouTube channels I subscribe to that are, I think are funny. Yeah. Or interesting. Um, and that's typically why. If I think about why do I go to YouTube, well, if I want to fix my hot water heater, I go to YouTube. If there's something wrong with my car, some gauge goes off, I go to YouTube, I look it up, like most people. Yeah. It's the, it's the place to go to learn things. Absolutely. And so, and vice versa, for us as creators, it's the place to go to share things. Yes. And I, I guess you're similar to me in that respect in that you get a great deal of pleasure and enjoyment out of putting out stuff that's going to help people, particularly in music. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to also put you on the spot because I don't know if you've had any opportunity to watch any of my videos. And I'm guessing not, because you're a very busy man. But I, uh, I was going I was to watch one of your live streams yesterday. Live stream, awesome. And one of my too many live streams. Now, there's, there's another thing. Rick was very um, generous in, in offering advice, and it, it's quite sensitive. I could have been upset by this, but I wasn't, because I think it was good advice. And that is to make your videos regular, but not to upload too much or too little. A week is probably about long enough, and once a day is probably the absolute maximum of video uploads, because people get overloaded. Um, so that's something I learned. What I was going to say is I've, I've written a tune, and I, I wasn't going to do this, but seeing as the other question sort of didn't work out. I think I'm going to play you something that I've written, okay. and I'm going to put you on the spot for giving me a critical review of it, because actually, not only would that be immensely helpful for me, but it would also be good to see how you criticise and how you find benefit and can change things. Because this man's produced, well, please, I, I can't name them all. Could you? Oh, it's just no, no, nobody really. Nobody really. Are you, are you, I, how are you going to play me the song? Are you going to play me a recording? Are you going to actually play it? I'll play it for you. Nice. I'll play it for you. I want to hear it. If I can remember the words. Okay. So, sorry about that. So this, just to give you the background story, there, there was a YouTuber that had the handle of Pee Wee Thomas. And he was diagnosed eight months ago with skin cancer. Mm -hmm. About two months ago, he found out that it was terminal and he passed away a week before we came out to get the comp. Well, a little bit before that, I realised things were not good. He was going to hospital. Again, this ties the music and YouTube thing together because I become very, very heavily invested in him, as I believe a lot of our subscribers become with us. And I felt personal loss when it happened. And one of the great things that I find with music is it's an incredible release of emotion and tension and things feel easier if you can express them in the song. So bearing in mind that it's quite a sentimental song, feel free, I've got very broad shoulders to be hypercritical, but also please bear with me if I'm not absolutely perfect on it because I haven't really practiced this very much. So it's cool, the guy used to sign off, he used to say, see you later, ta-ta, bye-bye. So that's what I called the song. And I'm just gonna play you a verse okay. and a chorus. It was, the format was that it was an intro um, riff, a verse, mm -hmm. a riff again, a verse, chorus, riff, verse, chorus. Okay. And I'm just gonna play you the verse and chorus because I want to see what you think of the this. I'm very, very nervous playing in front of Rick Beato, and in fact, I, I, I feel that I'm perhaps being braver than I normally am. And one of those <laughs> things that you have to do when you're a YouTuber is put yourself out there. That's right. Today is the day. It may not be another day. There may not be a tomorrow. So take your opportunities. It's called. Cool. See you later. To ta Bye bye. <laughs> We can do 
you said to hold the love between us two. So that was a really shortened version of the... Okay, play me the chorus again. Don't question... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't question... Don't even try Though I may be sleeping I will never die Don't shed a tear for me And please don't cry Cause I'll see you later To top of mind Okay, so I think you could do some uh, that, that's good melody, good melody um, When you go to to the E major chord. Wow. I would probably do something like that. I think it'd have more shape to the melody. Yeah. So go for that part. Maybe Nick on. And we might go. And this is exactly why I think it's an amazing and incredible opportunity for me to play you a tune and show you what I've written because I think you've just taken that a step further than I could hear. In I like I say, 30% better. Yeah, <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> Listen, thank you so, so much for agreeing to do this for me, for indulging my Pleasure. addition there and the improvised uh, format of this video. I think actually that kind of suits you and I. We've, we've got that kind of, we've, I've felt that we've had that kind of relationship. It's been really good to meet you, really good to get to know you. I have a huge, huge amount of respect for your knowledge and skill. And I, I love what you've just done there. And that's given me a good idea for changing that <laughs> song very, very slightly. Cool. But thank you. So guys and girls, I really hope you've enjoyed meeting Rick Beato and watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and as much as I've enjoyed spending a lot of time with this gentleman this week. I will be back really soon with another video. Please give it a like and if you're not subscribed already, subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified of my future uploads. Also, definitely, please go and check out Rick Beato. You can buy his Beato book which will tell you much, much more than the snippet we've had today and also go over and see his website and you may, you may find that this man can help you as he's just helped me in a very, very short space of time. Thanks a lot for watching and thank you, Rick Beato. Thanks, Mike. And you take good care and I'll be back soon.